Welcome to Average Joe's Pool. Today we're going to be bringing you an in-depth review of these. And these are the Continental Pool Balls from Aramith. By far their cheapest genuine phenolic resin set. Let's do it. So when it comes to the Continental Pool Balls, these are somewhat Aramis' dirty little secret. Now yes, of course, you could say, well, we've all got secrets, apart from here at Average Joe's, where we most definitely have not kidnapped... <laughs> Don't you hurt him. So exactly why are Aramith so secretive about the Continental Ball Set? Well, it's not an out and out secret as such, because of course, if it were, you wouldn't be able to buy them. And these are readily available to buy at places like Amazon. However, Aramith do not promote the fact that they manufacture these balls in any way, shape or form. And in fact, if you go onto their website and take a look, you will find that these particular balls, the Continentals, despite being available worldwide, are not promoted or listed at all on their website. And so, although Aramith might not be shouting from the rooftops about these particular balls, they clearly do realise that there is a market for lower priced balls, and they want in on the action. So, whilst we're talking about cheap, what's the actual price on a set of these Continental balls? Well, believe it or not, these can be picked up for as low as $55 a set. And when you remember that these are genuine Aramith balls and also are made of phenolic resin, at $55, that really is as cheap as chips. And when we say chips, we mean these, not these. <laughs> And one of the best places to pick up a set of these is actually on Amazon. And we will be adding some links to these on Amazon into the video description below. So if after watching this video, you fancy buying yourself a set, please be sure to help support us here at Average Joe's Pool and use the links in the video description. Okay, so let's have a quick look over the uh, Continentals by Aramith. And they come delivered in this eye-catching red box. They do not come uh, shrink-wrapped. And so, as we can see, we do have quite a lot of wear uh, to the outside of the box. But of course, beauty is on the inside. And hopefully, that's going to be the case here too. So let's take a quick look. So the first thing you'll spot about these immediately is they do have a very traditional pool colour scheme. And I can see that all of the balls here, they do have a nice uh, shine to them. They've uh, definitely got a nice gloss there as well. So one of the things that stands out immediately, uh, just looking at these, is the design on these solid balls. Now instead of having a, a solid uh, white circle uh, within which uh, you'd normally expect to see a black number, instead on the uh, Continentals here, uh, it's, uh, it's actually printed on. And so it's all printed on in a one colour. So it gives these balls a kind of a funky look, kind of a retro 60s, 70s kind of vibe going on there. Uh, visually, they, they look quite nice with, with that design, uh, but it is uh, slightly unusual for what we'd expect to see on a modern set of pool balls. And yes, you did hear that right. Uh, these numbers are indeed uh, printed on. And with this set of balls, this is the main compromise that you're going to have uh, buying a set of these compared to a different set of Aramith balls. And with regards to the printing, uh, these are definitely printed. And you can actually uh, feel that print uh, on these solid balls. Uh, when you rub your finger or your thumb across it, you can actually feel uh, that printing. So that is uh, slightly uh, raised. So let's also have a look at the uh, printing uh, that we have uh, on the stripes here. Okay, so what we have on our stripe balls, uh, it's printed on either side and we actually have a gap uh, down the uh, centre. So that band uh, doesn't go all the way around like you would kind of traditionally expect. Uh, it does have a, a gap down the centre, I guess because it's printed on one side and then reversed and printed on the other. And by having the gap, you haven't got to make sure that they align 100%. So again, that's probably a little bit of a cost-cutting measure during the print process. That is just a guess, but that would be probably why that exists. And one of the things that's immediately concerning me a little bit with these, not so much on the, on the solids, but definitely on the stripes, is that this printed band has a distinctly different texture to the rest of the ball. The white part of the ball, as you would expect, is uh, super smooth, uh, very glossy, it's got a nice shine to it. Oh, 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 my eyes! The uh, print, however, is far more matte and it's got a slight roughness to it. And so my immediate thought with these is, is this going to affect not so much the, the roll of the ball, uh, they are slightly raised, that might affect the roll of the ball, but it is so uh, little that it probably won't. But this texture is a little bit more concerning. 
So my thought process is that having uh, this slightly uh, rougher texture uh, on the uh, bar here, as opposed to the, uh, the white section, may well affect the uh, spin uh, on, on these balls. So if you're transferring a spin from the cue ball uh, onto your object ball, could this difference in texture possibly have some kind of effect on the spin of this ball? Uh, for example, as this spins, uh, because this is a little bit rougher, is this going to cause a little bit more drag as it spins compared to your usual smooth surface? So maybe it will, uh, maybe it won't. We'll find out uh, during playtesting. Uh, but there's definitely, like I said, a distinct uh, amount of roughness uh, on the uh, printed bars compared to the nice smooth white sections. Now with regards to the, uh, the actual kind of print quality itself, uh, it looks to be pretty good. The numbers are nice and nice and clear. It appears to be well printed. Uh, however, we do know that minor imperfections are permitted uh, with the Aramith quality uh, control on the Continental ball sets. Again, it's another one of those um, factors that helps to, uh, to save cost. So you may find um, a minor imperfection or two uh, on the printing and those may well sneak through quality control. And the other thing that I did notice is that a few of these balls uh, have distinct marks on them. Uh, they don't appear to be uh, chalk marks, they look to be uh, black rather than uh, blue. Um, so I don't know what, that, what that's about, but we did spot uh, two or three again. That might be an, another cost-cutting uh, exercise to get these balls out as cheaply as possible. Uh, and again, uh, that would be permitted uh, in Aramis quality control. And looking at the uh, design again on our uh, stripe balls here, uh, because of the way that they've done it, uh, I assume that these are just standard cue balls that they can just take and just print it on in the different colours. Which again, of course, is a much cheaper way uh, than having to produce these in all different colours. So again, that's probably another way that Aramith are able to get these at such a low price. So if you've been researching pool balls in any way, shape or form, there's probably a keyword uh, that you found bounced around many, many times, and that is phenolic resin. But what exactly is phenolic resin? Well, phenolic resin, as the name would suggest, is a type of resin. And of course, all pool balls are made from resins. Uh, most are kind of poly resins and things of that nature. However, when it comes to uh, the Aramith brand, all of their pool balls are made from phenolic resin, which is a particularly hard, and so also therefore a hard wearing type of resin, which makes it ideal for use in pool balls. And normally with phenolic resin, it's the higher end pool balls that are made from this stuff, uh, by the main manufacturer of phenolic resin balls, which is Aramith. However, it's quite unusual to be able to find uh, phenolic resin balls at this kind of price point. So these are fairly unique in that regard. Now, there are some main advantages to having uh, phenolic resin balls uh, over other types of resin. The first being that phenolic resin is exactly the same type of resin that's used in pool balls used in professional matches. So phenolic resin is definitely going to give you a far better game than other types of resin. And the second advantage of phenolic resin is because it's so hard wearing, a set of phenolic resin balls will definitely last you a lot longer than a cheaper set made of other resins. I'm not gonna live forever. I'm not stupid, Lucius. No one lives forever. And the third benefit of phenolic resin balls actually comes down to cloth wear. Phenolic resin balls tend to be much kinder on your pool table uh, surface uh, than balls made from other resins. And so the theory is your cloth uh, should last longer before it has to be replaced. So again, that's another bonus because it can save you money over the long term. Now it's worth noting uh, that the resin uh, that these are made from, Aramith do several different types of resin, and these are actually made from uh, Aramith's Premier resin. And that's exactly the same resin that Aramith use on their crown sets, uh, and also, of course, the Aramith Premier set as well. And to give that some context, the Aramith Crown Balls retail at $100 a set. And likewise, the Premier set retails at $165 a set. And we've actually already done full review videos for both the Crown and the Premier sets. So we'll add uh, links in the video description below if you want to go and check those out. But what you're essentially getting here is exactly the same resin for $55 that is used in the $100 and the $165 sets. However, Aramith have advised that over time, the printed numbers will eventually wear off. So these are really suitable only for residential, non-commercial use. So as long as you're a casual pool player that's not playing for three, four, five hours a day, uh, this should be a suitable set and should last you a decent amount of time. So we now know what these are made of and what they look like. So we need to get these onto the table and of course start playing with them. But before we do that, a couple of technical tests. We need to check these for both size 
and wait. Let's do it. For test number one, we'll be weighing the balls on a calibrated scale to check that all of the balls meet the WPA regulations and to check weight consistency across the set. And the WPA regulations require the balls to weigh between five and a half and six ounces. And after weighing the continental set, we found that every ball easily met the WPA requirements. And for this set, we had an average ball weight of 5.83 ounces. The heaviest ball in our set was the cue ball, which weighed in at 5.911 ounces. And our lightest ball was the number one ball, weighing in at 5.809 ounces, which gives us a variance between the lightest and the heaviest balls of 1.76%. So to summarize for weight, all of the balls in our set met the WPA requirements. And the variance on this set was 1.76%, which is an excellent result, actually coming in a touch under the Aramith Crowns, which came in at 1.98%. So overall, this is a very well-matched set for weight. And this is definitely a great result for weight at this price point. So we'll award a well-deserved 18 out of 20 for weight. So next on to test number two, where we'll be measuring the balls for size using a calibrated micrometer. And when it comes to size, the WPA regulations state that balls must measure two and one quarter inches, which is 57.15 millimeters, with a permitted tolerance as shown here. Now, unfortunately, this is where we hit a bit of a snag. For our set, we had an average ball size of 57.07 millimeters, with most of the balls sat towards the lower end of the permitted tolerance, with the number nine ball barely making the grade. And our largest ball was the number two ball, which came in at 57.11 millimeters. And unfortunately, our smallest ball, which was the number seven, did not meet the WPA size specification and measured in at 57.01 millimeters, which is just outside of the permitted lower tolerance. So we unfortunately have a fail for size on our number seven ball. But even with that ball coming in undersized, because the rest of the balls were all slightly towards the lower end of the permitted tolerance, we had a decent size variance for this set which came in at 0.18%. So to summarize for size, we did have a size failure for one ball in our set, which was our number seven. And it should be pointed out that this is extremely unusual for an Aramith product who have a quality control that is second to none, as you'll see if you watch any of our reviews of other Aramith sets. So this illustrates the compromises that are made to be able to bring you a set at this low price. But we do have to remember that this set is not designed for professional or tournament use. And our number seven only just missed the lower tolerance. So in reality, for a casual player, this would make little to no difference. So with all this in mind, we'll award the Continentals with a disappointing 10 out of 20 for size. Well, you make a good point, Joe. So we've now got the technical stuff out of the way and we can move on to the fun stuff. We need to get these out and start playing with them. And if you've ever seen any of our review videos here before at Average Joe's Pool, you'll know that we give all the products that we review a minimum of five hours use before we formulate any opinion to make sure we can give as fair a review as possible. So what do you say? Let's play.
Come on, guys. Let's take the boat to Alcatraz. It'll be a blast. So we've now got to the end of our playtesting and we've definitely done far more than five hours. In fact, I'd say we've probably done over 20 hours on these particular balls. So let's make a start with the positives. And without doubt, the biggest positive on these set of balls is the retail price. And we have to remember when we're conducting all of these tests and doing this review, that these balls do have a retail price of just $55. And when you factor into that, the second most important positive with these balls, these are genuine phenolic resin balls. And to get phenolic Phenolic resin balls at this type of price really doesn't happen very often at all. And so as far as phenolic resin balls go, this set really does offer the best value that you will find. However, are they perfect? No, unfortunately they're not. And we're going to look at the negatives in just a moment. But first, let's focus on some of the positives with this set. So overall, the balls seem to be a fairly good quality. They've got a nice high gloss to them and they do have a nice look, especially on the spotted balls, which have almost a kind of a retro kind of 60s, 70s uh, thing going on, uh, which is pretty cool. And another thing that I was slightly concerned about, which I'm going to uh, add in as a positive, is um, Aramith say that after a certain amount of time, this print will undoubtedly wear off. And I was a little bit concerned about how durable this print would actually be. And so what I did is uh, when I was setting up my uh, racks for breaking uh, on eight ball, uh, I'd always make sure that I put a stripe ball right at the front of the rack and made sure that my cue ball would be making contact with part of the print. Because I wanted to give this a really, really good test uh, over the kind of 20 hours or so to see if I could get this to chip. And I'm glad to report that there is not a single mark on any of the ink on these uh, printed balls at all. And uh, I really, really did try, as I said, I set this up for breaks uh, so that I'd be hitting these uh, with maximum power and we haven't got any chips whatsoever. And overall, this set does play pretty well. And we do have to remember, of course, once again, they are $55. And so any other alternative ball set you'd be buying for around this kind of price wouldn't be phenolic resin. There would likely be a poly resin instead. So they probably do play a little bit better than anything else that you're going to find at this kind of price. But do they play perfectly? Unfortunately, no, they don't. So let's take a look at the negatives. Two years ago, a boy fell on a potato, mashed himself. And so when it comes to negatives, there is one huge negative that sticks out like a sore thumb on the Aramith Continentals. And that is the fact that these balls have the printed numbers and the printed details. And it's worth pointing out that these are the only balls in the entire Aramith range that have printed numbers. And unfortunately, we found that these prints threw up a number of issues when it came to testing. And the main problem is that these printed sections are far rougher in texture than the nice, smooth, normal surfaces of the ball. And it's worth pointing out that our stripe balls have a lot more uh, printed surface area than the solid balls. And so although some of the faults that we're going to mention are probably more likely to occur with the stripe balls, we did find that it affects all of the balls in this set. So one of the main negatives about this print is it somewhat negates the whole purpose of having phenolic resin balls. Because one of the key advantages of having phenolic resin balls is longevity of your pool table cloth. And that's because phenolic resin balls are generally much harder wearing than other types of resins. And so generally, phenolic resin balls are less susceptible to wear. And so they tend to stay smoother for a lot longer, which of course is kinder to your pool table cloth. And so the theory is that having phenolic resin balls will make your pool table cloth last that little bit longer and so it's going to save you money over the long term. However, when you've got large sections of the ball that are printed with a quite a rough material like these are, then it does somewhat defeat the whole purpose of them being phenolic resin because this is still going to be quite rough on your cloth. And that's definitely something you should be taking into consideration if you're looking at buying these as a longer term investment. And another major negative when it comes to this ball set is we found that these suffered pretty badly from cling. And if you're new to pull, you might be asking yourself, well, what's cling? Now, what happens with cling is when your uh, cue ball makes contact with your object ball, they actually stick together just for a fraction of a second. And what usually causes cling is to have some remnants of chalk, uh, usually on the cue ball, but sometimes on one of the object balls. And so by having that little patch of chalk just on there, on the spot where these two balls touch, 
they grip together more than they normally would. And that's why it's called cling, because they literally cling together just for that split second. And that's enough to completely throw off your object ball. And cling is an everyday issue with pool and it affects all pool balls and all levels of pool players. And what we found, especially on the stripe balls, because they have this large uh, printed area, which is quite rough in texture, is that it was relatively easy for a cling to happen. And I definitely saw more cling on this set of balls than I've seen on any other set of balls. And during the kind of 20 hours or so that we've been playing around with this, we've seen quite a lot of cling happening, which of course is a major, major negative. You're a negativity spreader. And so to test our theory, we did uh, set up some follow shots uh, where we actually lined up the stripe part of the ball so we would purposefully uh, make contact with that uh, with our cue ball. And we compared that to the crown set, which is also by Aramith. And during that test, we definitely found that unfortunately on the Continentals, they are far more likely to suffer from cling. Now it's definitely less apparent on the spotted balls because the printed area is far, far smaller, but it is also printed. And so we did find that it happened with those occasionally as well. And we also believe that the second contributing factor when it comes to the uh, cling that we found on these balls is a little issue we had with our cue ball. So when it comes to this cue ball, uh, we found that it played pretty well. Uh, it's nice to control. Yeah, it's good for draw shots and things of that nature. Uh, however, this thing is an absolute magnet when it comes to chalk. This thing gets absolutely peppered with dozens of chalk marks really, really quickly. And it does require constant cleaning. And so of course, when you've got a combination of a cue ball that retains a lot of chalk, coupled with a uh, object ball that has a rough surface, then that's a disaster when it comes to the problem that we've been experiencing, cling. And another small issue that we found when it comes to uh, colour is because we've, we've essentially got two different types of technology uh, going on here. They've got the standard uh, Aramith resin here, and then they're trying to colour match that. Uh, with a print. And what we found is the consistency uh, between the resin and the print isn't always very accurate. Now, I don't know how well this will actually show up on camera because color reproduction is a little bit different than it is in real life to the human eye. Uh, but for example, when we're looking at the, uh, the oranges here, our print is noticeably lighter than it is on our solid ball. And this does vary a little bit. Some are closer uh, than others. Uh, the greens are pretty good, for example. Uh, but like the uh, the blue, they're almost two completely different shades of blue. Uh, this is considerably darker uh, when you look at it in real life uh, than, with, than the print that we have on our stripe ball. And so as far as consistency goes, when you're looking at these uh, as a complete set, uh, they are a little bit off. Uh, another little uh, negative um, that I wasn't too happy about is the fact that we've got essentially a, a white number on a yellow stripe. And likewise on the solid ball, we've got a solid yellow and it's printed in white. Usually what we would expect to see is a solid white circle with a nice crisp, bright black number in the center of it. And of course, white on yellow is not very clear at all. So the numbers on these are a little bit hard to read, but that does really only affect our uh, one ball and our nine ball, uh, which are obviously yellow on the other, on the other colors, they are darker colors. And so it's not really an issue with those at all. And again, it is a little bit strange uh, having this little gap uh, in the uh, stripe when you see these kind of rolling across the table. It does kind of flash a little bit as it, as it turns. Uh, it's a little bit kind of unusual. Uh, it would have been much nicer if we could have had that print going all the way around in a solid stripe, as you would expect to find on a traditional pool ball. However, this is definitely a uh, cost cutting exercise. And we do have to remember that Aramith have probably cut as many corners as they can to be able to bring these to you at $55. So if you want a set that cheap, that's definitely one of the little niggles you're going to have to live with. And another minor niggle uh, whilst we're at it. Uh, we actually had one of our balls here that came in under spec. And when I say spec, I mean size. Our number seven ball here came in under size for the WPA regulations. And that is somewhat disappointing. And of course, it's not something we'd expect from Aramith, who have such high quality standards. However, Aramith, of course, have never actually stated that these are tournament standard balls. These are balls that are primarily designed for residential use. And so whilst it is a shame to see a ball from Aramith that's coming in uh, under spec, uh, they definitely would not have allowed this ball to uh, pass on any of their upper sets. When it comes to their cheapest set, you're going to have to be a little bit more flexible. And another little negative uh, that I want to pick up on, and I'm not sure uh, whether I was uh, getting a little bit paranoid and kind of imagining half of this. The issue isn't whether you're paranoid. The issue is whether you're paranoid enough. 
uh, but I did kind of think that these balls did play a little bit slower than expected. You have to remember that these are made from exactly the same resin, the Premier resin, that they use on both the Aramith Crown and the Aramith Premier sets. However, I was convinced that these felt a little bit sluggish on their way around the table. And so I started to get a little bit paranoid, thinking, well, maybe this uh, print is kind of slowing these balls uh, down a little bit, and uh, maybe in the roll when they're bouncing off the cushions and that kind of thing, because it is a far, far rougher surface than the uh, normal surface of the ball. And so I did find myself setting up some uh, tests, uh, comparing these to other balls, knocking them around several cushions to kind of see how much run they had in them uh, before they finally went, dropped into the pocket. And so, yes, I think uh, overall, maybe the these do play a touch uh, slower, uh, which is a little bit unusual because these should be made from exactly the same resin. And any difference in the way that these play is definitely very, very minor. We're not talking Lada versus Ferrari. <laughs> And to be honest, we were probably being a little bit overtly paranoid with this, especially because we'd experienced all the various issues with cling. And once you get it into your head uh, that a ball's not performing quite how it should, that tends to kind of manifest itself and become somewhat of a monster. But with all that said, we do have to put this back in the context that these are $55 and they really, really don't play that badly at all. And they will almost certainly play better than anything else that you're going to find at this kind of price. And so we've now looked at all of the positives and the negatives. And so now it's time to give the Aramith Continental Pool Balls their official Average Joe's rating. And as we saw and discussed earlier in this video, we did have a size issue resulting in these scoring a 10 out of 20 for size. But we also had an excellent result for weight at 18 out of 20. So next, let's score for quality. And overall, the quality was acceptable. The balls themselves are made from the Premier Phenodic Resin, which is excellent, but it's unusual to have balls with printed numbers in this day and age. And there are some issues with the print, namely the rough texture, as well as some colour matching and other issues. But the saving grace here is that these balls are just $55 a set, so you have to be realistic in your expectations. And so with this in mind, we'll award a 12 out of 20 for quality. So next, let's take a look at performance. And again, we did have some issues here, such as the unusual increase in cling that we experienced, and also the slightly sluggish feel compared to Aramis higher end sets. But overall, these balls do play well. They roll straight and true, and they seem to be well balanced. And apart from the increased likelihood for cling, the print does not seem to really affect the balls. And so you can definitely enjoy a decent game with these. And no, they're not tournament standard balls. And if you want those, you're gonna to have to pay a lot more money. But even with their faults, these probably still play better than anything else you'll find at this price. So we'll award a 12 out of 20 for performance. And for our final category, value. And this is where these balls really excel. At $55 for a genuine phenolic resin set, these really are unique and offer very decent value. And yes, at this price, you do have to be prepared to make compromises, such as the printed numbers. But for the casual pool player, these balls are a very good buy. No, they're not perfect, but yes, they are cheap. So we'll award a 15 out of 20 for value. So adding up the scores, we get a 67 out of a possible 100, which is a respectable score. The retail price is definitely the saving grace for this set. But our recommendation would be to upgrade to the Aramith Crowns, which are a far superior ball at $100 a set, if your budget will allow. But if your budget is super tight, you'll definitely struggle to find better at this price. So what are our lasting impressions of the Aramith Continentals? Well, overall, we would say that they are a fairly decent set of pool balls considering the retail price. Note they're not perfect and we do expect to see better quality from Aramith. But at $55 for genuine phenolic resin balls, these are probably going to play better even with their faults than anything else that you're going to find in this price range. So you may be asking yourself, well, should I buy a set of these balls? And the answer to that is if your budget is genuinely super, super tight, then yes, absolutely, these are a good buy. 
But with that said, the next set in the Aramith range is the Aramith Crowns, and they retail at $100. And yes, we fully appreciate that that's close to double the price that we have on the Continentals. But the Crowns are definitely a far, far superior set to these. And so in our opinion, that extra $45 would definitely be very well spent making the upgrade to the Crowns over the Continentals. And of course, on the crown set, nothing is printed. All of the designs are molded with engraved numbers, uh, exactly as you'd usually expect to see from Aramith. And so in our opinion, if you're looking at these, you should definitely also consider those crowns for that little bit more money. And if those are of interest, we have actually done a full review video on the Aramith crowns. And so we will add a link to that video into the video description below. And likewise, if you are interested in buying yourself a set of either the Continental or the Crown Balls, then we will be adding Amazon links into the video description below for the best possible prices available on these sets. So if you are interested in buying them, please be sure to help support us and use the links in the video description below. And there we have it. That concludes our review of the Aramith Continental Pool Balls. We hope it's been enjoyable or entertaining for you. And if it has, can you take one second out of your busy day just to do a quick favour for us and just hit that like button. And likewise, please do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We've got loads more great pool related content just waiting for you to check out. So again, thank you for watching and we'll leave you to have fun playing with your balls. We'll see you on the next one. Have faith.